I previously made a video about my Cockroft Walton voltage multiplier and one part of it was a, a discharge tower which contains the load resistance. I discussed that a little bit in the other video but I thought the design challenges of this load resistance uh, required its own video so I'm making a short one about that. You know, there is the the Cockroft Walton voltage multiplier. I'm not going to say anything more about that. There, are, that's another video about this if you want to know more. So back to this. Uh, a voltage multiplier requires a load. If you don't have a load resistance, it can burn out the diodes because they would be discharging into a short circuit. So this device here is the load resistance. It actually does two things. It, forms a discharge terminal. So you can see that on this toroid on the top. That's where the uh, multiplier would discharge into. And then it's connected by this wire right here to this string of resistors which I'll you know, move down here. They're the black objects. There's 24 of them they're connected in series parallel and these are not your normal resistors these are high voltage high power resistors um, each one of these resistors there are 24 of them is two and a half mega ohms it'll handle 50 kilovolts and dissipate 12 and a half watts uh, the total resistance of the combination is 6.8 mega ohms and it'll handle 400,000 volts and 300 watts. So some of the unique de design challenges are I wanted this to operate in air. So when you operate in air at these voltage levels you need a lot of spacing and you can kind of see that going on here. The resistors are mounted on an acrylic carrier. You know, an acrylic has uh, very good insulation properties. And I have each set of this three here, these are in parallel. So each one of these sets of three are in parallel. And then each set of three is connected in series with the next set of three. So it kind of snakes down like this. And you may notice I have each set of three on alternating sides of the acrylic. So, you know, this set is on this side, the next set is on this side, and the next set is on this side, and so on. And the reason for that is uh, standoff insulation. And when I'm making these wires, I have to be very careful about keeping the curves as smooth as possible. You can see these curves are quite smooth. I used uh, forms to make these curves because any sharp points you're going to get corona. And originally I didn't have these insulator, these insulating plates, which you can see here. And when I didn't have those, what would happen is it would arc from here all the way down to here, which is about six inches. So I added these insulating plates between each set of these resistors to prevent that. And they go all the way down and it's quite effective. And down at the bottom, the bottom set of resistors is connected to uh, a terminal which ultimately gets connected to ground. Uh, the red pole is just a PVC pipe. It's just a support to get the discharge terminal up at the same height as the Cockroft Walton voltage multiplier. So I think that better explains some of the design challenges here. 
you know, I, I, originally I was going to put this in oil, but then I, then I would have another oil filled tube, and I didn't want to mess with another oil filled tube. So I wanted this to run in air. So if you want to see more information about the Cockroft Walton voltage multiplier that this is designed to work with, I have uh, some other videos on that. So that's all.